do have one of these. A bag you just move from one spot to another. And what's inside is always in the back of your mind. But you'd rather move it, trip over it, or ignore it than deal with what's inside. What's inside the blue bag? This is my first UFO. And this is my quilt story. I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I live in Toronto with my husband and four adult children and my dog. I started sewing when I was around 10. In my late teens and early 20s, I made a lot of my own clothes. I even made my own wedding dress with my grandmother. But once I had children, all my sewing was relegated to just making Halloween costumes. That's about all the time and space I had. But way back in 2005, I thought I had a free hour every week and I signed up for a quilting class. But I knew I was in the wrong spot when I asked the teacher, how do I use velvet and taffeta in a quilt? And she just gave me this really weird stare and decided to forget about the quilt class. I was gonna make something on my own. I did buy four half yards of fabric. I didn't particularly like the pattern, but I really loved the colors. Well, very soon after, I lost that spare free hour. With four growing kids and a business to run, that fabric quickly got put in a bag in the back of the closet. Fast forward to 2008. When my kids hit high school, they really began to struggle. Each had their own issues, and my husband and I tried various solutions, but in the end, we decided going with private school education. So I took a second job to pay for the tuition fees. Did I mention it was 2008? So add in the economic mess that the world was in to make everything just that more difficult. The days were so long, and when I came home, there were dirty dishes in the sink, and kids were behind closed doors in their room, and I barely had enough energy to take the dog for a walk. My husband was working just as hard. I quickly realized that if I was going to survive this insanity, I really needed a project to come home to. And then I remembered that fabric in the back of my closet. So I sat down at my computer and designed a block. I laugh at myself now. I really thought I had designed something new and different that would take the quilting world by storm. But in the end, I took a week to design a block that had been around for 200 years. And then with my layout, I did what I did with so many of my first quilts. I made it so complicated. I spent a couple of months traveling around the greater Toronto area, trying to find enough fabrics in my colors to make it really scrappy. And then I started sewing. I didn't have any YouTube, I didn't ask any friends, or I figured out the math and just went for it. And I had this tiny office at home, so it was just really a glorified cupboard. And it was so small that if I had to sew, I had to move all my stuff onto one side of the room to clear out some space. And then if I had to do business work at home, then I had to move everything else back over to my sewing side. And it was just this massive movement of boxes and books and bags from one side of the room to the other side of the room. Yeah. Now, if you've watched my video on five beginner mistakes, you know all the silly things I did, but I did even more things. Like I first started with quilting thread. I mean, it said quilting, so I thought, I was quilting, so I should be using it. So it was really slow going. I worked at it bit by bit, and finally three kids were graduated from high school. On the work side, things were getting tougher and tougher every day. Until one day, I just had enough. I couldn't take it anymore. It was one of those turning points in your life. You deny, you dig in, you avoid, postpone, until finally there's no other choice left. And I gave my notice. And I came home thinking that life could go back to normal. But no one was home. My kids had grown up. I sat there in that empty house with my dog, feeling so burnt out and broken and you wonder if you paid too high a price. And shortly after, my quilt went back in the bag and went in the back of my closet. And it sat there as I mended with time, and it took time. 
about two years later, my cousin posted on Facebook about starting up a new stitch and chat group. And I went, yes. I was eager to reconnect with her. We hadn't seen each other in a long time. And she introduced me to new friends and guilds. And then I started taking workshops. So much has happened since then. Great things, lovely things, amazing things. And I've made a ton of quilts. And when we moved, that blue bag came out of hiding. It was no longer in the back of my closet. It was now in the middle of my sewing room. And last year, after binge watching some YouTube channels, I thought maybe I would unbox this old UFO. Now, if you've watched my library of videos, and if you've made it down to the very, very bottom, you will see these two videos. So this is my oldest UFO. I pulled it out of the cupboard. And last year, I managed to fix the small blocks that were wrong, and then I sewed them into the bigger blocks, and then I sewed all the blocks together. I bought a backing, I bought the batting, and then I had this flash of inspiration. And I thought I would make this incredible after quilt. It was going to be big, it was going to be bold, but what actually happened was it all went in the bag and it got tucked away in the back of my sewing area. Oh, it talked to me. It talked to me every day as I moved things around the room or I piled things on top of it. It came on a couple of retreats with me, but somehow it never ever seemed to get front and center. And a couple of months ago, I realized I was going to do this probably for another three or four years if I didn't set myself a deadline. So I called the workroom and set a date for the long arm rental. And whatever I had at the time was what was going to be quilted. If I didn't get anything done, I still had the wide backing. So with three weeks to go, I tried to get myself in gear. The big amazing idea I had, well, it didn't happen. I managed to do something for an after quilt, but not as quite as big, complicated, or demanding as what I had planned. And I did put on borders because it wasn't quite big enough. At that point, I realized I might be too big for the machine, but when I got it downtown and I loaded it, it just fit. Now, once it was loaded and seeing the sheer size of this quilt, I realized any customizations I just simply would not have time for. My long arm rental was five hours long. Just doing a panto, I would be lucky if I got it done in time. I got the panto all loaded up and went for it. And <laughs> I had so many problems. Just, it was so, the quilt is so massive. And one of the main problems is, I think I'm a better long armor than I am. I just simply don't do it enough. And I'm always shocked when I start how out of practice I am. I've got great ideas. I've got the boldness to go for it, but I don't actually necessarily have the technique. So I'm struggling with the batting. I'm seeing all the imperfections up close and personal. I'm seeing all these corners that don't match, all the, the wrong threads, all the multicolored threads I've used. My fabrics don't necessarily match. And suddenly all the emotions of those past years come churning, churning up. all those long hours, the burnout, but mostly I miss my family and I want those years back. At one point, I even have to stop, take a step back and breathe. I do manage to pull myself together and finish, trim up that darn thing and it all goes back in the bag and I head home. And if I thought it was heavy before, it is super heavy now. And it sat for a couple of weeks till I finally got around to putting the binding on. But there's a little miracle that happens when you're binding a quilt. It's a slow process. You really have to shift in speed, your whole body, to slow down to accommodate the excruciating slow process of hand sewing and binding. But unlike the long arm phase, your body knows it's in the home stretch and you're a little kinder to yourself. That craziness is quilting, 
We take these big pieces of fabric and we chop them all up and then we sew them all back together. You know it's flawed. You know there's hundreds of mistakes all over it, but they all disappear. Once you get this frame around it, the fabric transforms into a quilt and the marathon is over. And although this is not the season for quilts, winter is coming. And when it does, this quilt will be counted on to keep us warm.